Good afternoon, one footballers, and welcome to another live show as we are in the aftermath of Brazil beating Mexico in the fifth game of the knockout rounds. I'm sat here with Nico, who uh, who's just watched the game with myself. Yes. What do we make of it so far before we get onto the obvious topic of a certain number 10? Well, I'd again. say Mexico, once again, couldn't mm. make it to game number five. That is like, by now the Mexicans, they actually talk about that as a curse in Mexico. Yeah. Because they haven't made it to basically the fifth game of the, of the tournament, so which mean like, uh, quarterfinals, and they haven't made that at a World Cup since, I guess, 1986 or something like that. I, I read a stat saying they have played the most World Cup games without ever winning it. That is <laughs> all you need to say. Sums it's, up their bad luck. To know. And, I mean, I thought for the game, it really exposed what I'd said earlier in the competition when they beat Germany. So, they had so many chances on the counter-attack to beat Germany, and they only scored one. And I remember saying at the time, against a better team, they're going to be punished for it. Yep. And it seemed the same thing happened. Exactly that happened. Exactly that happened. They had fewer chances than against Germany, but obviously they would have, yeah. would have fewer chances. We knew that uh, up front. And, but they had their chances and they couldn't score. And yeah. um, that's what you get. Unfortunately, that's it. It seems like, when is there a point where you stop trying to play this sort of counter-attacking, we'll sort of cling on as much as we can, an imprint on the game? It seems like these smaller teams it's like even, the, even the Mexico are decent, tend to worry too much about the opposition where instead of playing their own yeah, game. Yeah, but the thing is, I get the feeling like they, they, don't, they don't really have that. They, don't can't, they can't play in that style and what they're playing. Oh, Look, okay. they've been, Mexico has been doing brilliant in a group stage. Mm. Um, even though they lost to Sweden, actually, like 3-0. Um, but they had six points at that stage. At that stage yeah, so it was, it was less important. Yeah, and before they played brilliant, but they've been playing that style, as coach, uh, the coach said, before the game. They prepared mm. for, to play that style at the World Cup for the last seven months. And now you end up being, being uh, behind yeah. them against Brazil. And you kind of wonder, well, when you prepared for seven months, did you never think for a second that you might be down? But yeah, apparently they didn't think about that. And they were like, no, we are playing they our style. They trusted their defending. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I guess in the end, the difference between the two is key players, is match winners. And today, as, as much as I know you're going to hate to talk about it, the match winner with a goal and an assist. <laughs> yeah. Is, and there are probably a few tears right now, is Neymar. It's crazy, man. Like, uh, it looked like his, his, his leg broke twice, and then he assisted on another goal uh, after scoring the first one. So Neymar, mm. uh, was, that was surprising. Yeah, look, um, I actually just tweeted it a few mm. uh, minutes ago. I would really like to like Neymar. But he's making it hard. Yeah, it's hard. You'd love to admire oh. his skills and all his football and talent. Brilliant. He's brilliant. But yeah. You can't it's admire the kind of character who I think look, they're not gonna care because they're through the Brazilian fans, the players, Absolutely. whatever. Yeah. But it's kind of ruining the reputation. When I Absolutely. think of Brazil, I think of all the, the amazing football that you've seen over the years. I don't think of that. And it's kind of ruining, and if they go on to win it it will leave a sour taste in the mouth. Neymar actually on. gets uh, critics at home now. You all know Brazilian football fans are crazy for football. Yeah, yeah, and as long as they win, they wouldn't give a fuck. Let's be honest yeah. here. But th right now they're talking about how annoyed they are by Neymar. And if they are annoyed, annoyed just like the well, rest of the world, rest of the world is. And that's the thing with him. Like, like you just said, he's absolutely brilliant. He's one mm. of the best. But these little situations, these little things, just like, why? Why does he have to do that? Like, but, but on the other hand, like, yeah. give, let, me, let me say something on it. I feel like if you're, like, whatever, 25 years old at that point, you get transferred to Paris, to Paris, for the record fee of all time. Mm. And what they do in Paris is they light up the Eiffel Tower, the biggest sign of Paris, they light it up for you. Like, some, maybe you have to get a little bit crazy. Because honestly, I think Neymar kind of lost it. I think he's got a little bit crazy. I just think that he, it seems so simple for him to cut it out. Just don't do the rollabout thing, but keep on doing the thing which won your team the game. Yeah. The goals and the assists and the play. And he won it. Just it. Seems so si I know, it just seems so simple. Yeah, it does. Oh, Look, he scored, doing, the first one. he scored the first one uh, when Gabriel Jesus said, uh, like, you don't yeah. like him, I do like him. I honestly just want him to score it so I can tell. Uh, but then Firmino scored after and he's the one I'm going for. Here. Exactly, he's but Neymar assisted on it, yeah, even though he yeah, tried to yeah, score. True. And I'm like, just like, if it wasn't for that one scene where, mm. yeah, the Mexican guy, who was a Sacedo, he stepped on his leg. Completely it was unnecessary. Lyun, actually. Maybe Lyun? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's possible. So. It's possible. Um, it's completely unnecessary. They, yeah. all, they all dyed their hair, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> um, it's completely unnecessary. And now, like, what's stuck in my mind is yeah. this situation. But that's the thing. 
and that's not the that claimer, name. scored and assist. You get to the end of the game and no one even cares what happened on the pitch. Brazil Absolutely. were through, but there's like a stupid asterisk next to it saying, by the way, everyone's talking about Neymar because of the stupid shit he did. It, it really annoys me as a football it, yeah, fan. Me too. But I, as the lover of the beautiful game of what I'm holding in my hand, yeah. I don't want to see that kind it of is, crap. It is just so annoying. It's frustrating, actually. Yeah. It is super, yeah, frustrating. super frustrating. I don't, I don't, yeah. It makes you kind of cheer for Mexico, even though they didn't deserve it because Brazil was Look, better. I'm German. I had my issues with Mexico yeah. in this World Cup, <laughs> and still, I was completely supporting only Mexico today. Yeah. Well, so taking Neymar, for example, because this is. For everything bad we say, this is going to be the counter side of the argument, is that Neymar and his Brazil side are through to the quarterfinals. Yep. Whereas and you know, Me Messi and Argentina and Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal are not. And, and to so. be very fair here, with, it wasn't so hard for them. No, like it, they with ease. Little trouble. Yeah. So, but we know, we know they have the better teams, but when we talk about the best players in the world, for example, everyone says, you know, it's still between Ronaldo and Messi, is it At the end of the day, Neymar's, is through. Neymar's the one who's in with a chance to win, you know, and the likes of Kylian Mbappe, which is, a, a, I think, a complete outside shot for Ballon d'Or. Definitely future Ballon d'Or, but for Absolutely. this year. He's going to win it. Still in the competition. He's in, so, there. He's in there. So is Jordan Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan Henderson still is in the competition. I will give you that. Like if he wins the Ballon d'Or, having somehow taken England yes. to the World Cup final, yes, Jordan, I will not complain. I'll be right behind you. He has to score roughly like 10 goals in the rest of the tournament to win the Ballon d'Or. 10 goals in the last, what is it, all the way another four games? <laughs> yeah. It's going to well, be hard. Yeah, it'll be it's going to be hard for him. It'll be impressive getting them off Kane. But so, so what, what's, what's Neymar got to do then to kind of, because he moved away from Barcelona to step out of the shadow yeah. of, of Messi. You know, with everything, everything was always about him, especially after that, you know, amazing comeback they had a few years ago. So he's moved to PSG, he's done what he's done at PSG, which has obviously dominated <coughs> the league, because they do. He's come to the World Cup and he's taken his side, because he's been very influential, yeah. further than the rest of them. So has he stepped out of the shadow or does he need to win something big like the World Cup? So for me, it always felt like everything was lined up for him perfectly, because mm. He's just like, to be fair, he's just reaching his prime, probably. He's, we, yeah, we, we haven't yeah, seen yeah, the best yeah. Neymar yet. And, and, but Messi and Ronaldo, they're over it. You know, they're just fading out. Yeah. Um, it's, gonna get, it's just going to get uh, worse. Like, not, they're not going to be as good from now on. No. Just, let's be fair here. So it always lined up for him to just basically, there you go, I'm going to step up. Here I am. My name's Neymar. Uh, deal with it. But um, I kind of feel now that he, because of all the stuff he does on the pitch, which yeah. we don't like, all that... That yeah. the showboating and the, like the, the diving the and all that acting. stuff. I feel like he actually has to win something big, maybe the World Cup, to get the, the appreciation he deserves. Yeah, to push aside the, uh, yeah. the bad stuff. Yeah, well, I guess Ronaldo got his fair share of that and still did. Ronaldo, did Ronaldo in the end, carried Portugal to yeah. a European I w champion. Yeah, I will say that Brazil does have a far better a um, way better. team supporting Neymar, like way Coutinho. Better. William was really good today. Jesus, Firmino off the bench. If you look at the Casemiro. squad, there's one position that's Fagner, who's not a world-class player. Everybody else yeah. could get the, the world-class. True, true. Yeah. But I think enough. They've got more than enough to, uh, yeah. to kind of push themselves further. But it's not, they're not carrying, you know, Neymar. Neymar's still carrying this fantastic team. And it, it kind of felt like that, especially in the first game in the group yeah. stages. Then when he scored against uh, Costa Rica in the second game, it was mm. the late game. It still kind of felt like, yeah, you scored the second one in the 96th minute. Like, yeah, then, it's, then, it's then the, the waterworks come but, and you think... Ugh. But now he actually starts to like get that team on his back and carry them. So, yeah. I don't know, what do you, uh, how do Picking you feel? What is, what is his ranking when it comes to Messi well, and Ronaldo? Well, I, th I, I think when it comes to, to the Ballon d'Or rankings with Messi and Ronaldo, even Mbappe, he seems to be, fortunately for him, stuck between generations. The yeah. Messi-Ronaldo era is five, six years plus above him. The Mbappe year, years five, are six years under below him. him, the likes of Mbappe, uh, even Dembele, his international teammate. So Neymar seems to be in a generation of his own. I mean, even Who's the, in there with Even him? the likes of Deli Alli, he's only 22, he's in that lower generation. Coutinho could be Coutinho in there with Coutinho is similar him. age to him. He's never going to win it. Uh, like well, you never know now that he's does. a Barcelona, and, you know, if, this, if this Brazil team do win something. Fair but point. I think that Neymar really is in his own mini generation which which, which kind of clears the way it clears yeah, the so he path should win it like yeah. three times before like Kylian and Mbappe yeah, yeah. and all the younger before, guys take before over. those guys come through mini generation which which, which kind of clears the performances of single players where mm. would you rank him 
It's hard to say, like, this player has been it's outstanding. It's hard to say. It's hard to say because, as we mentioned before, you look at the statistics and you say, right, there's the goals, there's the assists, there's the, you know, the crucial plays and crucial games. He's got his team here. But then you also think they're kind of balanced out by the play mm-hmm. acting and not so, so well. I'd put him up there. He, he seems now, especially they're going to be, you know, he's got more chance to press as they go through and the likes of Messi and Ronaldo aren't. I'd put money money on to make the the tournament eleven. Yeah, the team oh, of yeah. the tournament. I'd put Neymar in there, purely for lack of competition. How many assists does he have now? One or two? Uh, I think two. So that would mean he's up to four scorer points already. Yeah. So he's kind of in the in the golden boot. He's kind of in the mix. But right. th- this is the thing. Without the play acting, everyone would say no doubt. Yeah. But he's kind of he's he's really testing. The, yeah. the admiration that people get for him. You know, no one wants to win a sour World Cup. Yeah. You want to win it with you know, adulation and you know, the joyous praise from the fans. We, we watched the, Ger- the g- game and with German commentary since mm. we're sitting in Berlin. And the commentator actually said, by the way, guys, this guy can do plenty of good stuff when he's not bitching around. And that is kind of, that kind of sums it up, right? It, it's true. That, that is the summary of Neymar. But he, he doesn't want to be known for that, Neymar. Yeah, but like, he doesn't want to be known as that guy that could have sh- been so much better if he didn't play it. Look, he, we all know he's kind of active on social media, which means yeah. he, has a, he, he does look on Twitter. He knows what's going on. <laughs> you should be able to see what's going on and what people think about him and all these memes of him like flying around. And yeah. I don't know, man. So let me ask you one question, man. Mbappe and Neymar, yeah. how long till we actually say Mbappe is the better player? Well, given, given France's incredible performance the other day, I'd, maybe two years maximum. It depends on the trajectory. Of course, they're both maybe at PSG. Maybe two weeks if they... If yeah, maybe two <laughs> weeks. I mean, both being at PSG, do they, are they fighting for each other's spot? You know, Cavani's, you know, 31 now. Are they going to be playing alongside each other, competing? Mm. And they're going to be arguing over penalties, you know. Oh, it really could, yeah, this it could, doesn't feel this like could Mbappe take is, to is that kind of guy, though, right? But I, see, I don't think he is. I think Mbappe is very level-headed. Yeah. However, we could be seeing a repeat, and Mbappe could get to the stage where he's providing everything for PSG. And much like Neymar was always in Messi's shadow and yeah. Bale Ronaldo's, and if Mbappe like, could find himself in Neymar's. Why am I doing this to him? Like, it's it's sort of uh, get everyone's taking over, and it seems to be a. Uh, a passing on of the mantle, which the older does not want to give away just yet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. at Barcelona, we've seen Iniesta leave and Coutinho come in, and it seems the right fit. But I really hope for Mbappe's sake to see the kind of player that he is to keep playing football, keep enjoying playing football, and not get caught up in the way that Neymar has. When he first came over, he was a joy. Absolutely. He really was a joy. Absolutely. To watch. So, totally uh, agree. I think. My prediction for the rest of the tournament, I mean, well, let's start with you first, for Neymar and Brazil. <sighs> mm. Well, I think, let, look, they're going to play Belgium if they win it tonight, is that right? The Belgium against J- Japan. Japan, if they win it, they should play Belgium, which Probably. will be hard. Yeah. If they win against Belgium, then I guess they will go at least to the final, if not all the way. Yeah, I can see the same, and I think the trend of, of them not starting so well and Neymar as much as he's doing his annoying bits, is scoring goals, being vital at the right time, and I can see Brazil winning ugly and still getting through yeah. without, without breaking it. Anyway, I think that's, uh, that's all we've got time for for now. So thanks Absolutely. so much for joining me, Nico. Uh, it's been great with you guys as well. Make sure you stay up to date with all the World Cup content on OneFootball TV. But from me and Nico, until next time, we'll see you soon.